Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to look at inlays. This is a Chinese character. Hopefully it says love, but for all I know it could say chicken soup. I've used a method called V-carve inlaying, and it was developed by uh, Paul Zank and Damien Durrant. They've written a nice document here, and I'll put the link to it below in the description box. I suggest that before you start doing one, that you do as I did. Download it, print it out, and have a good read of it from front to back, so that you understand what's going on and how it all works. V-carve inlaying is different from traditional inlaying in that both pieces are actually V-shaped. They've actually been V-carved. That means when they come together and the edges meet, you're going to get nice crisp edges on your inlay. And since you're using a V-carve method, you can actually get sharp points, something you can't do with traditional inlay methods because you've always got to consider the cutter radius. Let's go over to the machine and have a look at how to do it. I've started by mounting my material on the table and using a 60 degree V cutter I will be cutting my pattern into the wood three millimeters deep. I've now changed the cutter for a 3mm upcutting spiral bit to clear the remainder of the material from the V-carve. This concludes the machining of the female section of this project. Next we need to load in our contrasting wood onto the machine and cut the male part. I've now fixed this piece of pine to the table. It's painted blue from an old project I had, but that's actually going to help because it's going to show up the V-carving as it's done. The important thing here is that the grain direction, which is this way on here, matches the grain direction on here so that when we come to sanding this all our grain will be in the same direction. For this cut again I'm using exactly the same cutter I used before that is important so it's a 60 degree V bit. I've now replaced the V-bit with a 3mm upcutting spiral bit and that's to clear away the rest of this area here. The great thing about this is it doesn't need to be super accurately set height-wise with relation to where the V-cutter was because it's going to be shaving away at the bottom here and that bit's never even going to be used. It's going to end up being cut away at the, in the final machining of the part. This is just typical. If I'd tried to accurately set those cutters, it would never have worked, but since I wasn't trying, they've come out perfect. Next thing I have to do is I need to cut this here to remove these bits here so that when it's upturned, it will fit with this piece. Now that it's trimmed, it will now fit into this piece like so. So let's have a closer look at this and see what we've got. Starting with this, this is simply a standard V-carve 
with a flat area set. I set the flat area to 3 millimeters on this. So the V cutter went in and it cut down as deep as 3 millimeters and stopped. This on the other hand was a mirror version of this piece here obviously so the two would fit together but what I did is when I set the cutter, when I set the uh, setting in the program I set a start depth of one and a half millimeters and then I set a depth of cut of two and a half millimeters what this means is that if I was to machine this normally you would find that the width here at the top would match the width here that would be with no depth and no start depth at all because I set the start depth of one and a half millimeters it means the point at which this opening here matches here will be one and a half millimeters below the surface and that's the real secret to this particular method now you might ask why didn't I set that start depth at three millimeters so it matched correctly with this well the problem with that is is you need to have space below to make sure that you don't bottom out on it but also just as importantly you need to ensure that there is room for any glue that's left in here for it to go otherwise you'll never be able to push the parts together now the other thing is because these walls are angled the two pieces will go together until the walls touch so this is going to give you a much more accurate fit than a standard straight up and down cut it also means you gain the advantage of being able to have sharp corners something you cannot get in traditional inlay methods I'm just going to smear the glue around here get it everywhere basically it doesn't matter if the glue gets onto this part of the inlay because this will be being this lower section here will be being cut off when it's finished again I don't need to worry about the painted surface here I know that PVA glue does not stick to it but since it will never reach the bottom of these slots here it isn't going to be a problem now I've actually decided not to bother putting any on this here I think that will help eliminate the squeeze out significantly and hopefully reduce the amount of cleanup required so these two bits just go together and now should be clamped I'm going to use these spring clamps for the job and we'll now leave this to sit here to cure I've allowed the glue to dry overnight and it's now come time to cut these two pieces apart you can see there's a gap down the center here so I'm going to run the blade just on this side here to ensure that I do not damage the piece that I want to keep now that's been split on the bandsaw you can see the raised pieces that are left here after the cut I now need to sand these here flat to match the surface of the remu here to do that I put some sandpaper glued it down to a piece of MDF here and it's just a simple matter of rubbing the piece backwards and forwards until these surfaces are the same level I 
I'm now going to use a 240 grit to finish it off. So I'm just giving it a rub now with some boiled linseed oil, which will bring up the colour in both the inlay and of the remu. And there we have it. I can honestly say that's the best inlay I've done. I can also honestly say it's the only inlay I've done. Well, all I can say is this has been a really interesting project. I had a few issues when I first started trying to make these things here, and most of them were chip-out related. The biggest thing I've learned doing this is make sure your V-cutter is nice and sharp. And that's where I was basically going wrong. I made a few mistakes along the way with my earlier tries, but the biggest problem I had was this. I thought it was sharp, I even touched it up on a diamond stone. But when I looked at it closely under a high power magnifying glass, I found that the cutting edge of it was more like a saw blade than a router bit. So make sure your cutters are nice and sharp and most of your problems will disappear before you even begin. The other problem I encountered was my choice of wood. The bottom, or the female part, was New Zealand Remu. It's a nice wood for V-carving. But the real problem was the pine. I got a lot of chip out on the pine, and because it's not supported very well, it just flakes and breaks off pieces as it goes, and then the whole thing becomes useless. If the chip out goes below the line where it meets, the remu, then it's basically wasted. I finally solved the problem by making the whole thing a little bit bigger and reducing the depth that I was going to sink the pine into the remu. That made these top pieces larger and eliminated a lot of my issues there when it came to the V-carving of the pine. The other important thing is, do read this here. Paul and Damien have done a really good job writing it. It's well worth spending the time reading and learning how to do it properly. Once I got over my problems, the whole thing did cut and go together really smoothly and was relatively quick to do. So don't take uh, my failures there as a problem with the process, but it's just a learning experience on my behalf. In the meantime, Thanks for watching guys, and uh, I'm going to go and find somewhere to put this now, and I'll catch up with you again later. Cheers!